Hello and welcome to the Authenticate session that will be hosted by myself, Ori Eisen from Tristona and Boyan Simic from Hyper. We're going to talk to you about an effort we started through the OASIS organization. We have started a technical committee to use QR codes for passwordless authentication that may or may not use the FIDO protocol underneath it. Even though FIDO has broad applicability, we're all fans of it, and that's why we're here at the show. There are some use cases that we see in especially large organization that are more difficult to deploy through FIDO, and then the security and the simplicity and usability have to come to terms with how do you let a mass amount of consumers use something, even though it might not perfectly fit the FIDO world. We will uh, give some examples momentarily into what use cases those are. Uh, in the last year and a half, QR codes have become more popular and more prominent, not because we want them to. Most of you who go to a restaurant now probably read the menu by simply pointing your camera at a QR, which opens it in a browser. We now can deploy the same kind of simplicity and usability in passwordless authentication and not necessarily use proprietary software to do so. The OASIS Technical Committee has been set up. Uh, it was pioneered by Abby from uh, CVS Health to say, hey, I would like to use QR codes in some of these use cases because uh, FIDO is not allowing me to do it in an easy way. So he roped Trusona and Hyper to join as co-chairs to develop this technology. We're both do donating technology and know-how so we can make it easy on practitioners to deploy passwordless to mass amounts of people with ease of use and not compromise on security. Why is this important? Some of the target systems we're trying to implement this are legacy systems. So if you take an ATM screen, for example, it is not easy to connect that into a FIDO framework, specifically because of proximity. Uh, either by using BLE, it might expose antennas to the bank uh, ATM that they don't want to, or they would not want you to stick a USB thing into an ATM, especially when we're telling users, don't use your USB stick on computers that you don't own. So a call center, for example, or just a kiosk at an airport would all be cases that an organization would want to have very strong authentication, but using FIDO specifically, as the protocol says, will just be harder to do using it on your TV, for example, or on a Roku box uh, with streaming are other examples of use cases that we want to use authentication without passwords. And again, FIDO might not be the easiest way to implement it. Uh, we do need to have some common security reference when we do this because the people who will adopt it as well as developers do not want to go figure this out from scratch every time. And as we said, with Abby and Trusona and Hyper, we have started this uh, effort under the OASIS umbrella to help people see a standard and help people see a guide of here is how you would put this all together. Uh, we know that key FIDO vendor want to support this and educate the industry on QR codes, albeit it has pros and cons that we can go over later on. Some of the use cases we have worked on are the basic ones like log logging into a website or logging into a mobile app. And we will improve those methods as we see adoption in the market and iterate on this standard. The last thing before we go on is the word passwordless now means a lot of thing. And by using this Oasis group, we are trying to also help explain what does passwordless mean and what it does not mean. If you're a person in our industry, you probably heard of password vaults. Some people call those passwordless. And the reality is that yes, the user does not use passwords anymore. So you've taken it out of the user experience, but you have not taken the passwords from the wire. What we are trying to define passwordless is a way to log in where passwords, specifically static passwords, are not part of the traffic 100%, meaning they're not hiding anywhere or we didn't shove them somewhere and the user just doesn't see them. It truly is what the word means, passwordless. Well, yeah, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you, Ori. So for those of you who are not familiar with OASIS, it is a standards body that's been around for a very long time. If you're familiar with our one of our favorite standards, SAML, right? That they were a big part of that. And there is a technical technical committee there that's focused on uh, secure authentication, uh, you know, electronically. 
and really, you know, we, we decided to join this effort to provide a safe way for people to use QR codes. You know, I recently moved into a new uh, apartment and I, I had to set up a new Wi-Fi and everything. And I, I had to set up, you know, log into a lot of streaming services and other third parties using the different uh, smart devices I have in my home. And I scanned a QR code probably four or five times just throughout that process. And every single implementation worked differently and looked different. And I think that a lot of these companies that are providing these services see the need and they are writing implementations that are proprietary, unique, and may not be secure. So we really wanted to take the focus here on providing a, a secure way to join uh, a standards-based body for doing QR code-based authentication. Uh, myself, uh, the folks from Trusona, uh, Abby Barbier, and, and several others. There's typically about eight to 10 of us that meet every two weeks and discuss this and work on this standard. And you know, for, as far as our deliverables, what we're looking to provide is a, a paper or a specification on secure authentication methods protocol that's QR code based. And really look at you know, the different levels of security that QR codes are able to provide um, you know, we, we have seen instances in the past where implementations of QR code based authentication are not phishing resistant. You know, we will, we do discuss this in the paper and we do this, discuss this in a spec and how we think about it and ways to potentially add layers of security there to make sure that a user is, cannot be phished. And we really want to look at this and be able to provide a guidance for organizations and on, how, on how they can assign different levels of assurance based on the authentication method that's used throughout it, that's initiated through a QR code. So there's a lot of work that's going into this by a lot of great people. And you know, we're going to share some of the user experiences here next in a couple of demos that our Ori will kick off. Thank you very much. The first example we're gonna show you will be logging into some web application with a mobile app. Is what you're about to see is a login that requires an app. Later on, you'll see logins that do not require an app. In this case, I'm going to be logging into my PC on a separate screen, and I'll use my phone as the authentication that will not use passwords, ergo passwordless. And what you'll see is a short-lived QR code. It lives for about 30 seconds before it changes. We're making it dynamic, so it's difficult for bad guys to replicate, so it's not a black and white static code. And the scanner now in most phones, either in an app or just in your camera, could scan this QR and take the user to the next step. Then we present a channel, a challenge of accept reject. We also add touch ID or face ID as a second factor to unlock it. And if all those things check, the back end gets a SAML assertion or any kind of uh, messaging on o OIDC that the user is ready to go and you should open the door. What you see in the implementation details is the relying party, which would be the company that wants to conduct the login, needs to present a QR code or uh, allow a gateway to be presented. The gateway could have a C named URL, so it looks completely like the experience of the actual uh, relying party, so it will not look like a phishing site. And from there on, you can get the user to be primed, as you'll see in the demo, and scan. We're recommending the use of a dynamic QR code because it re reduces the risk of man in the middle attack or phishing. And the relying party also has means to validate the user because they're using the same mobile app that they've already instantiated and registered them with, and they can see that it's the same device ID coming back. Let us go to the demo. What you're about to see is a click that will go into a screen with a dynamic QR code that will prime the user to accept in the app. And then the user gets challenged. And after that, with biometrics, we can complete the passwordless login. Note that there's no PII in this entire transaction. We only have sessions ID and uh, values that are hashed that only reside in memory for about 30 seconds throughout the user's journey but nothing that reveals who the user really is, is part of this transaction. And every single time this event happens, the information in it is unique, meaning you cannot record the session and replay it later on, or you cannot uh, shoulder surf the user and then use any of this information in a subsequent login. 
Let us show you what this looks like. I'm now going to switch to a browser. Here is a sample login. This was the gateway after you click login that you get to. You can see two things in this demonstration. One that the QR code, the payload of it is actually changing every 30 seconds. So if we'll just sit on this page, you'll see the payload refresh itself, just like with OTP codes. And while the session is on and the code is presenting itself, you see that the QR code is dynamic and shimmering. And the reason for that is to make it difficult to uh, reproduce. In some embodiments, you can also have the reader see that there is movement on the QR code, again, to detect liveness and so forth. Uh, if you can see my screen here and my hand coming through the phone, this is just to show you a representation of an app that would have a reader. You simply point at the screen, which begins the process. Then the user gets the accept reject screen. After an acceptance, we are using either face ID or touch ID to add another factor. And that releases the key in order to complete the authentication. Note that you can use in some of these cases, uh, a proprietary technology, or you could also use the FIDO protocol underneath it all. So this is not uh, replacing FIDO in some use cases, you can still use FIDO but it allows you to begin the process. Think about an ATM or a kiosk or a television from a different viewpoint. Uh, to make the last point before I hand it to uh, Boyan to do his demo is when we talk about phishing, we really are talking about luring the user to go into another uh, phishing uh, site. So if uh, the real site is bank.com and the phishers want you to go to bank2.com, if we use the FIDO protocol after scanning the QR code, phishing really is not uh, a, a thing that you can do because the credentials would only work with the domain. So the phishing can only be trying to fool you to think you're going to the bank, but the net net of it is that the authentication on bank 2com will not work if you use the FIDO protocol underneath it. So as an implementer, you have the choice of what you want to use for what use case. And we are FIDO fans, so I don't want you to think about this as instead of just an easier way to start the journey. I'm going to hand it to Boya now. And Thank you, Ori. So the second demonstration is going to be very similar from a user experience perspective. But in this instance, the user is on their PC. They're trying to log into a web application and they do not have a previously uh, enrolled mobile app, right? This is an instance where they may want to use the uh, platform authenticator capability of their iOS or Android device, uh, which is you know prevalent now in the most recent versions of these operating systems. And so you know it's going to be a very similar flow, and I'll discuss some of the nuances as as we walk through it. So allow me to share my screen. So what we have here in terms of the experience is on the left hand side is a fictional bank called Highlands Bank. Hyper, at Hyper, we've been using Highlands Bank as our demo site for several years now. Only after using it for about two years that we realized that it was an actual bank in Scotland, but that's besides the point. Um, we, uh, in this experience, you'll see the Highlands Bank web application on the left and the, on the right-hand side is, is just the user's um, iOS device. Uh, it does not have a Highlands Bank mobile application associated with it in any way. And I'll show you how the authentication works. So in this instance, the user uh, the user experience does have a username, but it is not required. Uh, so when the user decides to choose it, decides to log in, they have multiple options available to them. And this user is going to select to use a, a QR scan to authenticate. Um, once they select the QR scan, they'll have a QR code available to them. Uh, and in this instance, before you know, they continue the authentication process, there's some additional checks that can be made. Uh, this is up to the relying party to implement uh, based on you know, the location, time, a device, so on and so forth that can be leveraged. Um, and then once they hit the approve button, then they would use their previously enrolled FIDO2 authenticator on iOS to approve that transaction. And at this point, there are uh, login is successful and then they have access to their bank account. So this is a very similar concept where the authentication was initiated by the QR code itself uh, by the user. And it is a short-lived QR code 
that will refresh automatically in the background. Um, and, and we are putting in the specifications to make this configurable uh, as an option for users to, to sign in. And we really want you know, uh, to contribute to this, this to the OASIS um, uh, standards that we're working on and provide this as an option and, and capability to, um, to have a, you know, an aligned method that we can all agree on uh, at a high level for doing QR code based authentication. Because to this day, even my dad uses a QR code every single day, whereas four years ago, I would have never been able to explain it to him, uh, which is amazing. So in terms of timelines, what you know, we've been working on this for several months now for the, for the initial spec. Uh, we've been reviewing it. We've been iterating on it. We've been talking to our peers and experts in, in, in the industry and gathering feedback and editing the document. We really want to finish the spec Q4 this year, uh, put out a formal call for review uh, early next year, and then submit this to ISO or ITU for additional review um, and, and adoption uh, you know, by the middle of next year. And so if you're interested in participating in this flow, if you have, you know, ways or, or opinions on technical implementations that can make this flow a even better user experience or have ideas on how we can make sure that we even further um, decrease the likelihood of potential phishing, uh, please join, let us know. We're always um, open to having additional participants and would welcome you. Thank you all.